Well, hey, this is David. I'm in the Kaiser Warehouse, and we're continuing our video series about how to use the Kaiser Quick Change Capo. Last couple of sessions, I know it was kind of a deep dive into just kind of the music theory side of things. I challenged you to learn the note names for the notes on the sixth string, the E string, and the fifth string, A string, and then the fourth string, the D string. But as we do that, we begin to discover that, oh, I can see, I can begin to see all these places where I could play in the different keys using the capo while playing along with someone else who maybe is playing in these, in these traditional open chord positions. I can be capoed somewhere else. So we actually shared a document with you last time, a resource that helps you understand. So if a, a song is in this key, what are all of my options? Where could I place a capo? And what key would I have to play in to match the actual song key? So feel free to reference that. The challenge from the last two video sessions has been, you could actually not even have to have that chart in hand, but there's nothing wrong with having that chart. If you need to print that off and throw it in your guitar case, do it, whatever it takes. We need a handful of tools, right? So do that. So what I'd like to do now is kind of play off of that chart a little bit or this idea of where could I play if I'm playing as an acoustic two player with another player, what, what would I do using that capo? And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a looper and I'm just gonna lay down a basic chord progression in the key of G. So let's do that first of all. Now, I've set that in my looper so I can play that back. So as an acoustic two player, I'm thinking, okay, if my acoustic one player in the band, or even if we're a duo maybe, if they're playing here in just a traditional open position, open chords, this position, I'm thinking, well, I don't necessarily want to play the same thing they're playing. What else could I do? Well, we know from that idea of sixth string, the E string, we know that the E chord has its root on the sixth string. And we remember we journeyed through this E, F, F sharp, G. I can place my capo on that third fret on top of that G note, and I can play in chords or in the key of E, with chords in the key of E, and they're gonna sound like the key of G. Now, I'm kind of close in his sonic space. I'm not real far off. Listen to the notes of that and listen to these notes. There's a little bit of variance, okay? I'm gonna play a little bit with the looper, with the capo at three, chords in the key of E, and let's just see how that sounds. And I'm gonna do the same strum pattern too, just for funsies, all right? So here we go. Okay, sounded pretty neat. I don't know, maybe we'll try something different. Okay, so now I'm, I'm thinking, okay, where else can I find the G note on my guitar on these top three strings, the fourth, fifth, and sixth strings? Where can I find another G? Well, there's actually another G right here on the fourth string, fifth fret. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide up, and we've learned this, if I'm looking for a root on that fourth string, I'm gonna use chords in the key of D. And I listen to that, I'm like, okay, still sounds like I'm in the key of G, but now I'm gonna use chords in the key of D. So D, G, I'm gonna use a B minor form, and then an A, or an A sus form. So again, I'm gonna use the same strum pattern. Let's see how this sounds in the sonic spectrum. And when I talk about the sonic spectrum, I'm really talking about the highs and lows, the different octaves of notes that we can play in. Let's just take a moment to think about that. I mean, a bass player in a band is playing low notes, right? And so if I have a piano player in my band, 
typically I'm telling my piano player or keyboardist, hey, try to steer away from low notes in the left hand because the bass player's got that covered. Find somewhere in the sonic space where you can fit in. So if it's a piano driven song or a keyboard driven song, they're still trying to stay away with that, away from that super low stuff, stay maybe in the middle of the keyboard. And if that's the case, then as an acoustic player, I'm thinking, well then how can I avoid that keys sonic space and maybe play a little bit higher? And so I'm looking for those different places where I can create sound and beauty all across the sonic spectrum in some different octaves. And so right now, listen to this. Compared to this. Now I'm in a kind of a higher ringing octave where this is probably gonna cut through a little bit better as I play with chords in the key of D, capo five to sound like G. Let's see what it feels like. Okay, so I'm liking that better just because of the sonic space. But the other thing I'm thinking about as a capoed player, especially if I get up higher into the sonic space, is could I do something different rhythmically than what the main acoustic player is doing? Maybe instead of constantly playing the same strum pattern, maybe I could do something simpler. How about if I just do big whole notes, meaning just four beat, long chords. So like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Let's try that on top of that loop. Here we go. I personally like that better. Uh, it allows me to take a sip of coffee in between each chord maybe, I don't know. But it's, it's nicer sounding. I'm staying out of the way of the rhythmic pattern of the acoustic one while adding some beauty in this upper sonic range. Let me give you one more example, all right? I'm gonna find one more position to play in the key of G. Where is that at? Well, there's one more G that we have not used. Now, where is that G at? It's right here. It's on the fifth string. Now, remember, we talked about two different keys that we can play in where the root note of the main chord or the home chord uh, is on that fifth string, and that's the key of A or the key of C. I'm gonna go C, so I'm literally just making a C form. There's my G, and I'm gonna move my capo up to accommodate that. So I'm going to use C, I'm going to use an F, I'm actually going to use kind of an F add 9 kind of thing, and uh, let's see, I will be going to an A minor, so I'm going to use an A minor 7, and then there's a G over B that I'll throw in, because the original chord progression had a D with an F sharp in the bass, so I'll throw that in. Now, what I'm going to do is arpeggios, arpeggio is just a fancy word that means broken chord. Now broken doesn't mean like it's bad broken. What it means is I'm breaking it up into its, into its integral parts. Arpeggio. So let's see how that sounds on top of the loop. Here we go. So there's another example. I've not only moved into a higher sonic space, but I also changed my pattern to arpeggios. So I have a lot of options available. Maybe on the verse of the song, the first trip through, I might not play anything as an acoustic two player. But maybe when I hit the chorus the first time, I'll play arpeggios, or I play big whole note chords that I hold out. Then we hit the second verse, Maybe I'll do the arpeggios or I'll do the big whole notes. Then we hit the second chorus, it's building. Maybe I do play rhythm. 
but I'm kind of doing a muted strum, a little palm mute, and I'm just being careful not to be as loud as that acoustic one. Okay, so there you go. You've got some examples of what could I do as a second player. So here's your challenge for this time. Take a song that you love to play, you know the key that you normally play it in. Pretend like you're in the band and play that song. But instead of playing it where you normally play, pretend you're an acoustic two player in that band and you have to do something different in a different sonic space and you have to do something that's not the same strum pattern or maybe finger style pattern as the main player. Be creative, see if you can find a place to fit a beautiful capoed part into one of your favorite songs. We'll see you next time.